Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. I was doing something and was inspired to ask you a question. You see me sipping off of my cup? Mm. What am I sipping through? A straw. I can actually look through it and see through to you. What if that straw was filled with dirt, mud, soot, spoiled, rotten food, sink water, dish water, dirty dish water? What if it was filled with some type of a nasty contaminant? Do you think I would be drinking out of this? Would you be drinking out of it? I don't think so. Mm. Well, let me tell you this. You have to think along those lines when you think about or consider what church you decide to attend. What I mean by that is any preacher that stands in the pulpit and proclaims God's word has got to live a clean life. Now, they may not be perfect, and we know that, but they have to be striving for perfection and humble enough to be corrected by anybody when it's time for that correction. You need to be able to look at your leader and say, that person is transparent. I can see. Do you hear what I'm talking about? I should be able to hold this straw and you should be able to see me. Can you see my eyes? Maybe not, because <laughs> it's so crazy with the computer. But listen, you don't want to drink something sweet and nice or good tasting through a dirty straw. Why would you want to receive the word of God, the holy word of God, holy counsel and teaching from a man or woman who's living sloppy, a man or woman who's screwing around and laying around with everything that, that would let him or let her. Why would you hang with a, a, a church leader or, or a, a mentor of any kind who's not living anything, who's living as sloppy and as messy as some of your unsaved friends? Why would you hang with someone like that? You know, the reason I use the straw as an example is because speakers, people who bring the word of God, who teach the word of God, or who counsel, even sing, those that mount that pulpit and serve God in a public setting, consider them a water hose. They are a conduit. That's what I am, a conduit. We're not anything big. The big deal is God. All we are, this is you, and this is me. This is your pastor. This is your leader, your teacher, your counselor, your mentor, the singer who's singing the word of God. And the one that is pouring the water through that water hose who's pouring in his truth, his anointing, his blessing, his power, is God. You cannot afford to sit up under somebody who is shacking. You cannot afford to sit up under somebody who is living a double lifestyle, who doesn't know what they want to be, who is a saint by on Sunday or Saturday, and a hellion Monday through Friday. You can't sit up under a leader who is beating his wife. You can't sit up under a woman who is beating her husband or, or disrespecting him. Leaders that disrespect their members and put them down in public and, and belittle them and make them look like nothing in everyone's eyes. Treat them with contempt. 
You don't sit up under someone like that. Someone who calls you stupid and, and be just, just, oh, I can't even think of the words. But you have to remember that what you receive from God is coming through that vessel. And if that vessel is not worthy, walk. You go and find somebody who is living a holy life, who has a loving character, not an angry, uh, abusive personality. You don't need that. That is not of God. Not a person that intimidates you so they can control you. You don't need that either. Food for thought. Who are you being fed by? Just think about that. What kind of life is your leader living? Do you respect them? Do you believe in their righteousness? Or are, or are you comfortable there because he's slipping and sliding and she's slipping and sliding, so you can slip and slide too and you don't have to worry about anybody getting on your case because this is what you call a liberal church. I'm not talking about bondage. What I'm really talking about is if God says, be ye holy for I am holy, why would you expect anything less? Why would you think God would settle for anything less? If he said it, not as a suggestion, but as a command, think about it. You know, you may have some loose cannons out there heading up some churches, but that doesn't mean that they're really operating under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's just another living for them. And they can slide on in and let you do what you want to do and preach you happy, play some good music, and hey, everybody's happy. But that doesn't mean God is happy at all. And it doesn't mean God is even partaking. Just be careful about who you follow. These are the last days. We can't play games any longer. There are some allowances. We have to stop now. We really do. It's time to buckle up, tighten up your belt, put on your seat belt, get everything in order, get your house in order, because he's coming much sooner than you think. Don't think that because he's delayed that he's forgotten. Okay, God is not a man that he should lie. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled in, 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 uh, in John chapter uh, 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Okay, he said, uh, there was a further down in that sentence, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Now, he's not saying, you know, this could happen, could be, who knows, maybe, maybe not. No, he's saying it as a definite. Well, let me tell you this. God says, narrow is the way to righteousness, to heaven, to the kingdom of God. And broad is the way to destruction. And many there be that go there. Which way are you headed? And who are you following? You could be following somebody do -do 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 -do, straight to hell. You watch your leaders. I'm not saying judge them. You pray for them if they're off. But you don't have to stay under them. They're getting a little too uh, too physical with their hands and a little too chummy with their compliments. You watch yourself. Don't think that because they're the leader and they're God's man or God's woman that God's going to wink at their nonsense. Okay. Just think, what church are you attending? 
What type of word are you getting? Are you allowed to do anything you're big and bad enough to do? Or are they really teaching that Bible? And are they living according to that Bible and teaching you to do the same? God bless you. Be very careful.